Okay, so I want to do a real quick video as a follow up to a video. I can find it right up here where I went over some of the basics of C classes. This is going to be me going through the actual full code and kind of breaking it down and showing how to extend it. Um, I'm not going to go over all the actual basic classes. Again, you can go to that video if you want to. If you're unfamiliar with it, then this is going to be going through the code that I actually wrote. Uh, breaking down how some of it works, how that integrates, and then showing how to create some extension of our rectangle class in general. So, real quick, <clears throat> let's up over here to VS Code. Won't VS Code even for me, but I digress. Let's take a look. We have a few files here. Um, let me, real quick. Yeah, I think that's good. I'll just drag that over. Uh, for now, we could ignore this pre-make Lua. That's just a build tool that I use. Um, the main part is we have main.cpp, rectangle.cpp, and rectangle.h. So this is going to be the main file. It's just including our rectangle header file, and then creating an object, well, a few objects, and then modifying those accordingly. Now, one thing to note just right off the bat is that these are all adjusting the exact same object. What we want to do is change these to adjust the appropriate object. Like so. And actually, now just to make sure no spec mirrors, we'll initialize all the objects right from the start. Okay, so we have three rectangles, A, B, and C. And according to this, we're going to have a blue rectangle of size uh, length 4, height 5, a bright green rectangle, length 6, height 2, and then a magenta square because they both are 9. So let's see if we wanted to. Let's just go ahead and save that. <clears throat> let's take a look at our header file first. So first thing, primer wants, uh, this is just, I won't go into the details, this is essentially you put at the top of all your header files and it initializes some C++ stuff. Um, I might go over that in a different video to go over the details of what that is because it replaced another standard of things that you initialize uh, for defining a class, but I digress you're going to see at the top of basically every header file that I have. And here we have our includes, io stream, and string. That's just some input output. And then our actual strings. And then here is how I typically suggest people use um, the standard library namespace. Instead of importing the entire thing, just pick and choose the parts that you want. So here I have it for string. Every time I call string, I don't have to have std colon colon string c out and end all the same way okay then we have the actual class that i went over in the previous video and there's our variables here rect length height color color id the compatibility color array and then our methods of the public ones are what i'm going to actually be extending today so you'll see me add some stuff here. And then if we add rectangle at CPP, um, you can see I am including my rectangle header. That means I need to actually have access to that file from both my rectangle CPP and my main CPP. That means I have access to it and I can use it at any given point. And then I have a commented out function that is the uh, correspondence to this commented out prototype here. So list color options, all it does is prints out all the possible color options in case the user wants to see them in a more interactive shell. We don't have an interactive shell, so I just have those commented out. If you want to see them in action, you can uncomment them. Um, not a big deal. Then we have our set size, run over that. Our set color. Um, get size, get color, get array. Uh, sorry, get area. And then finally, we just have some print. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and come over here to rectangle.h. I will put that over here to the side. So 
so I can see all the functions that I have right here. Mm -hmm. And then I will minimize that just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So three objects, rectangle A, B, and C. And then we want to set the color of A to blue, set size 4, 5, print it, uh, set color bright green, you know what? Now this is fine. Let's just do terminal real quick. Again, you can see we have blue, bright green, and magenta, and then all their sizes right after. So if we run that, actually, you know what? I'll just go in full screen. So we do ceiling plus plus. I'm just going to be really lazy. Include all of my CPP files. I pay that out. All right. So running that, you can see we have rectangle color set to blue. Rectangle size set to four five. That's going to be a length of four, height of five. You can see we have a blue rectangle with a length of four and a height of five. Same thing down here, we have bright green with a 6-2, that's going to be a length of 6, high of 2, and then a magenta of 9-9, nine, nine, so we have a square. That's all good, so real quick, I'll put that away for a little bit, and let's, let's do, let's get rid of one of these, let's get rid of the magenta square, actually, Let's get rid of both of these and just work with A for now. So if we want to, we can adjust our size before we actually print. Let's say instead of that, we want 5.4. And then we want to also real quick, just change this to say maybe yellow. Then we will simply recompile our code. Right now, and here we have rectangle color set to yellow. Uh, so it's set to blue. Then we set it to four five, and then we set it to five four. And we set it to yellow, and then finally we print. And we see that the actual file state is going to be a rectangle length five, height four, and yellow. And that's great and all. And we can just keep doing the same thing over and over. Uh, I guess we can do one thing. We can. Um, a dot get area. Since I changed code, we need to recompile. And yeah, Alec, you can see that we have an area of 20. Okay. But let's say we want to do a more interactive, like actually get something. So I mentioned this in the previous video. And what we can do to get something a little bit more useful, I suppose, is instead of doing kind of get size, get color, get area, all void functions. Let's say we do and oops, and get length and get height, and then I also want to do. Hmm, let's see. Let's do bool. Actually, I won't. Well, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do a bool of is square. And it. Well, it has access to length and height. Okay. I know what I mean. But, all being said, I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, I had that there. Not a big deal. I'm going to kill this terminal real quick. And let's see. So, I made a few things. So, I did int rectangle to dignify what class I'm in, what access I need. So a rectangle, and we want to get length. Okay. Oops. So I did comment. And mm -hmm. rectangle. Oops. 
make it height. And then I think I did bool rectangle is square. So we're gonna make these three functions real quick. They should be very, very simple. Nothing too complex going on. Should be good. So we look over here, we have all of our public functions added. So get link at height is square, so that's set up in our header file. And then we have the corresponding actual functions that we want to write in our CPP file. Okay, so we should know how to get these pretty easily. So let's go ahead and look at our get size. We see that this is just going to get our length. So we have rect length. So all we want to do, very simply, return rect length. Same thing down here, we want to return rect height. And if we want to do something a little bit more interactive, like maybe return the actual area as an integer, we can do that. Um, we can just do that. We'll change actual, we'll change get area to actually return the end in just a second. For now, I want to focus on this bool is square. So one thing we do here is hmm, that's the best way to do this. So if I'm trying to think of the best way to do it, uh, we'll do subtraction. If rect length minus rect height, I will simply because it was zero, then return true. And then if it's not, then it'll return false. So basically, if our length and our height are the same thing, so whenever we divide, or not divide, when we subtract them, it is zero, meaning there's no difference, then we should return true, saying that there is a square. Otherwise, we would return false, saying it's not a square. Okay. So I also said that we would change area to more interactive. So I have to do very quickly is just change this to an int. Get rid of C out and just do a return. You don't need these. I'm just doing it for my own sake. So it just returns the rectangle length times the rectangle height. And we need to do one edit. So I'm going to save CPP. And we need to change get area from a void to an end. So in this case, over here, I'm going to set all this back to blue. And I want to do int area, and then I want to do, you know, int length, height, area. Okay, and so what I'll do is real quick length equals a dot get length height equals a dot get height oops semicolon and then we will do a c out length times height and down for a new line and then we will also do Area a that get area, and then we'll see how that just area by itself. So basically, what we're doing is we are just using this to actually get the length and height as two integers in our main function, calculating the area manually, and then using an actual function they wrote to get the area directly from the class, and then here. We'll do if a dot is square, 
meaning it is true, then we will simply see out angle is a square. Else see out angle is not a square. Okay. So I'm going to try and run that real quick in a terminal and I want to simply recompile. Oh, we have an error. No arguments. Square did you mean to call? No arguments. Oh, I think I know what it did. My bad. Forgot my forgot those. Okay. Now let's retry that. There we go. There we go. Always need those parentheses at the end of a function call. And we will simply just do our A. Make that out. And we can see that color set to blue. That's normal. Rectangle set to 4 and 5. This is all from earlier. Now, we have 20, which is going to be this length and height. That's our manual area that we got. And then we have the area that we got from our function that is written specifically to get the area. And then finally, we have rectangle is not a square because 4 is not equal to 5. Now, there are other ways that we could have written the is a square one of those being if I think that would have done it oh I didn't add my second one Not a square, and then let me go to my main and let's actually make a square. Let's make a uh, a red five by five square. Okay, so we compile that code. Get data out, and you can see that our areas have changed to twenty five, and our rectangle is now a square. So. That's one real easy way to extend the function out of a class, and you see that we just chained two little parameters here, and it altered everything that happens after. So if we wanted to create more, it all have the same functionality, same attributes, but quite portable and quite extensible. So honestly, I think classes are really cool. Um, they're really, really helpful. I understand they can be very confusing at times, though, in object-oriented programming, when it is necessary and not necessary to create classes is not always cut and dry so if that trips you up at all that's completely fine but that's going to be it for me i hope you guys learned something and i'll see you later bye